name of Yahushua, that you will be blessed today, that you will be highly favored today, and that you will learn something that you didn't know about the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He has a personal soul. So let's dive right in. Uh, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, and then we're going to be going on to 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 9. So we're going to talk about God's personal soul, and he actually has feelings of grief in Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Wow, isn't that interesting? He sighed heavily right there. He breathed and sighed, and he was literally sorry in, in a literal sense. And you can go a little bit further than that in your own personal study time in Exodus 32 14 Judges 2 18 1 Samuel 15 35 2 Samuel 24 16 and Psalm 106 45 so right there he has a personal soul with feeling grief how about anger does God get angry I think if anybody's ever heard that one scripture, uh, God is an angry God. God is a jealous God. If you take time to get to know him, you'd understand uh, that he has feelings and passions just like we do. So as we study on today, uh, let's just find out about God's feelings. I uh, wonder if we ever hurt his feelings. What do you think about that, sister? You think so? Yeah. I can guarantee you, uh, if, if he has feelings, and the Word of God says he has feelings, I've probably hurt his feelings more than once. I need to probably do some more repenting. We all should. So yeah. in 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 9, And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. I'll be honest with you. If God appears to me once, oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He don't even have to appear to us at this point. I'm just obey him. But he had appeared to Solomon twice, and he said it says the Lord was in Solomon, First Kings chapter eleven, verse nine, because what his heart was turned from the Lord. Oh wow. Seriously, think about that. That brings judgment. His heart, Solomon's heart, was turned away from Jehovah. He went after other gods. Yes. And because he didn't keep God's covenant and his statutes. Hello? He didn't keep his laws. He didn't keep the rules. And he still was blessed financially. Think about it. Yeah. Well, there's a law of sowing and reaping. Whatever yes. you sow, you're going to reap. Whether it's money or clothes or good or bad or ugly. It, it, you put it out there, it's coming back. Yeah, we, we, it's a law. Heathens, non-believers, that's why the prosperity gospel is having such a heyday with it. Because they know if you sow, mm -hmm. whatever you give is going to come back to you. Um, they don't think about the heart matter, I don't think. Uh, what about, uh, about repenting? We just read that in Genesis 6-6. Six, six. So... God has a, a, the feeling uh, that he can, okay, repent. Not repenting in the sense that we think of it, but, um, you know, asking for forgiveness of sins, but changing his mind. Uh, God is not a double-minded man. He's not a God. He, he's not a man that would lie. But um, there's been a few instances in scriptures where we've seen him give a reprieval. Just like when uh, Moses interceded for the Israelites. Wow, if he hadn't, they'd all been dead. So God held off, yeah, changed his mind about yeah. killing them all. Yeah. Because somebody prayed. He gets people. 
um, jealousy. How about Exodus 20 and 5? Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. And we're finding out about God's soul today. God has a soul. He has a personal soul. He has a personal spirit body. He has a body. He has, a, he has hands and legs and arms and feet. Um, the Lord God Almighty is a true uh, being. And when the Bible says in John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, let's find out about God and truly dive into the scripture and not just don't take other people's word for it saints um, hello Philip I'm waving God bless you we love you uh, Exodus 20 and 5 thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. So God being a jealous God is the first of ten times that Jehovah claims to be a jealous God. You're going to find it in verse 5. Exodus 5. You're going to find it in 34.14 and then Deuteronomy 4.24. Deuteronomy 5, 9, and 6, 15. Joshua 24, 19. Ezra 39, 25. Joel 2, 18. Zechariah 1, 14. And 8 and 2. There is a godly jealousy, 2 Corinthians 11, 2. And an ungodly kind in Proverbs 6, 34. And the Song of Solomon, chapter 3, 6. So God has feelings. He has a soul. How about hate? Wow, that's really strong. Can we think that God could hate? Because and we know that the Bible says God is love. But I think people are really a little bit confused about what they think that means. Okay, because they cover that he is a God of hate and a God of love. No, they only focus on the God of love, which is, yeah, it's, it's for a lot. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. That's what the Word of God says. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And because you have rejected me. In other words, he's saying in Hosea 4, 6, And you're destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you have disobeyed me. You will not hearken to my laws. He said, I will remove you from being king and priest. And he also said, What's wrong with your children? Um... It's probably you're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So, in Proverbs 6, 16. Proverbs 6, 16. God hates? That's pretty strong language, isn't it? <laughs> Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. You got it? These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So, not only does he hate these things, but they're an abomination. He goes a little bit further. It's an abomination. Uh, and what exactly is um, an abomination, saints? It's beyond hate. It's like, whoa. It make it, it's just so bad that it's like whoa. Oh. These six things doth the Lord hate. Okay, there it is. How about love? John three sixteen. Now everybody knows that one. That's the love scripture. For God so loved the world. If you get the ancient. If you get the ancient language, it's not because God so loved the world. It's because God loved the world. He sent his only son. That whosoever believes in Yahushua shall not die but have everlasting life. But I cannot leave off the next scripture. I cannot leave it out. John 3.17. 
For God sent his son into the world, not that the world would be condemned, but that through his son, the world might be what? Saved. Now that's love. God has pity. Psalm 103, 13. Psalm 103, 13. I absolutely love to go on these journeys of discovery. If people would sit and see the character of the Lord that they say they're worshiping, they might change their mind about the way that they're acting and treating other people. Psalm 103, 13 reads on this wise. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pity, pitieth them that fear him. He's not talking about, oh, they're so scared of me, watch them. They're just like, you know, I'm the exterminator and they're a bunch of cockroaches. That is not what we're talking about here. He pities us the way he pities Oh, the way a father would pity his children. And he says, them that fear him. That's a reverential fear and honor and respect and honoring. And not being afraid of him. The only reason you need to be afraid of God is because you're living in sin. There's three reasons the Lord pities his children. He knows our formation. He knows we're but dirt. Again, he remembers the dust of which we are made. These, this is all scriptural saints. And he knows how frail we are. God knows us. He formed us. He made us. Of course he's going to have pity on us. Especially when we cry out to him and say, Father, Abba, Daddy. Now I'm not going to go around calling him Daddy all the time. But in my time of distress, Abba, Father. I love this next one. God loves fellowship. 1 John 1, 1 through 7. 1 John 1, 1 through 7. Our Father in heaven. Isn't that awesome? He would want a fellowship with us. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which and was manifested unto us. Could we be talking about who? Yahushua? Jesus? That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message what we declare unto you that God is light. Yahuwah is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I don't know about y'all, but wow, that's, just, that's we need to be rejoicing right there. You with me, sister? Mm -hmm. And we need to be jumping up and down. It's like, wow, he desires fellowship with us. But saints, I can guarantee you, according to that word, if you're living in sin and you're blatantly disobeying and you are not in obedience, you don't have any fellowship. You think you do. Now we're talking about God having a personal soul. This is about God's soul. He takes light in things. Psalm 147 10 He 
takes pleasure and delight. Wow, isn't that cool to, to think that, wow, we're made in your image, God, and oh, um, you hear preachers preaching, he's a spirit, blah, blah, blah. Have you ever, have you ever studied out what it means? What they're talking about, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We'll get to that. Hang out. We're going to get to that. Psalm 147 and 10 reads on this wise. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He take not pleasure in the legs of a man. So think about it. If he does, does not delight in the strength of the horse, which is his own power, you know, a horse has his own power, and he doesn't take pleasure in the legs of a man to get him around, he can delight and have pleasure in things, or he cannot delight and not have pleasure in something. He has other soul passions. Our Father, God, Yahuwah, has other soul passions like other beings. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Miss G, do you have that? because he doesn't have to the flesh that are evil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He only has the good passions. 23 and 24. Well, yeah, I think it's it's 22 and 23, isn't it? Yes. We can do, we can do all of that. Well, we don't, we, we only want to do 23 what does it say? 22, 22 and 23. 23. Yeah, we only want 22 and, and 23. What you got? 22 and 23. Yeah. It says, But the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness, self-control. There is no law against these. Talk about the fruit of the Spirit. Right. So we know that our Father all the time has these fruits and they're all the time coming out. Because that's why we're told the works of the flesh are manifested in 19 through 21. And it's very clear that if you're manifesting these, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. He is a spirit and he must be worshipped in spirit and in truth with the fruit of the spirit coming out of us. So, saints, if you check into this, Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and Colossians 3, 6, you absolutely have to be walking in the fruit of the Spirit. It's not about speaking in tongues and doing all of the gifts. It's about having the fruit of the Spirit. Wow, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Our Father has those same passions and feelings. This is so cool. You can't have a soul without feelings. It's part of it. Emotions. Emotions. Feelings. Emotions. It's Isn't like, that cool? Yes. A personal soul. So, I don't know about y'all, but I had someone approach me, and I thought it was a really interesting question. Do you think that Jesus is God's soul? It's an interesting question. And I said, do you have any scripture to back that up? And I asked after a few months, and nope, still working on it. So, when I was in Psalm chapter 5, verses... Um, four and five the other day, this really set in my spirit. Psalm four, I'm sorry, Psalm five, four and five reads on this wise, for thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with you. The foolish shall not stand in your sight, and you hate all workers of iniquity. Now, guys, I don't know about y'all, but that is harsh language. 
people, you know, want to hate God because these two scriptures right here. I didn't make it up. It's right here in the Word. You know, it, we need to study to show ourselves approved. And the question she asked you was, do you, if was she, she heard say to her, Jesus is God's soul. And I'm like, interesting. What do you think? What do you know? How do you feel about that? Is Jesus God's soul? Make up your own mind. I can't find any scriptures to, that, that say that. that Jesus is God's soul. No. But what I find here is that God has a personal soul oh, with yes. feelings of grief, anger, repentance, jealousy, hate, love, pity, pleasure, and delight, and other soul passions, which are the fruit of the Spirit. So... Hey, it points toward a personal soul that God has. Okay? Uh, the cool the cool part is is God is not a uh, God is not the sun, the moon, the stars, the image of a wood, stone, or metal object, person, uh, place, thing, anything on heaven or earth or in the sea. Uh, and certainly not an image of a beast or of or of a man. He is not the air. He is not the wind. He's not some love concept or some impersonal quality. He is a person with a personal spirit body, a personal soul, a personal spirit like that of angels and like that of a man except his body is of spirit substance instead of flesh and bones. Well, where can you find that, sister, with a testimony? Well, let me take let me take you where you can find that over in Job chapter 13 verse 8. See, I'm not going to bring it to you if I can't find it in the scriptures. I've learned to keep my mouth shut until I can back it up in the scripture. That way I won't look like an idiot or like I'm listening to some other spirit. What were those scriptures that you were talking about? The flesh. The like, flesh? Like 1 Corinthians 6 9. 1 Corinthians 6 9, and I think it was Colossians 3 6. Yes. So we're going to go over to Job 13, verse 8. Job. I love to go over to Job. Don't y'all I mean Job? You know what I mean. Ha ha. Job chapter 13, verse 8. Woo! Will you accept his person? Will you contend for God? Ha <laughs> ha! There it is. Bam! Will you accept his person? Well. Mine says, will you respect his person? Well, you respect and I think about that. Will you, will you consider, consider that God is a person? It's right there. And Job is like one of the oldest books in the Bible. Will you continue? With will you Okay, think about that. Respect, receive, accept. Will you accept the fact that God is a person? Will you contend for God? What does it say in your version? Mine says, will you respect his person? Will you contend with him? In other words, he's a person. He has a spirit body, a soul, and when we do the next study on this, we're going to find out about his hair, his face, his eyes, his lips, his, you know, his whole, all kind of body parts that God has. And it's like, and God has been seen by people. It's just in a different understanding of what they're seeing. Uh, when Moses said, I want to see your glory, he said, so he hide in the cleft of the rock. And he, God passed by him in all his glory and he could only see, see his back sides. Because it says no God, no one has seen God and lived. Right. And think about that. Right. That's in His glory. Exactly. You couldn't. It'd be like whoa. And all of this. Uh, well, we, we ain't going there today. There. All right. Yeah, we go there today. We'll get way, way off key. Right. Um, he has a personal soul, saints. Hebrews chapter one, verse three. So we have an Old Testament, Job thirteen. Eight, and we love the Hebrews 
section. Hebrews chapter. Um, where am I go? Hold on. Where was I? One and three. Oh, bam. Who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow. Mm. There you go. So, saints, this is very simple. God has a personal soul. Yahuwah has a soul. He is holy. He will not take pleasure in wickedness. He takes pleasure in things and he can also take displeasure in things. Yahuwah hates sin. He abhors all evil. That proves, saints, he has a personal soul. He has a seat of feelings, emotions, and desires. And he says in his word, Yahuwah is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He is a spirit being. We are made in his image, saints. We have to worship in spirit and in truth with our whole, our whole entire being, our soul, our mind, our feelings, our emotions, our desires. The way that we worship is going to reflect our desires. So if you've got to have a light show and you got to have fog and you got to have glitter and you got to have diamonds falling from heaven and you got to have feathers and you got to have all kind of woo fleshly emotional stimul stimulus uh simulation it's not holy spirit yeah in your worship and seriously on the flip side of that Worship in spirit and in truth is not bodily fatigue and journeying, journeying every Sunday to some building. Oh, here we go. You said it. I said it. It's not supposed to be a ritualistic motion. Time, time setting. Time setting, yeah. yeah you, time you only got an hour, especially the Baptists. We love Baptists. I was brought up Baptist. Okay, but An hour. throw the clock away. When you get to heaven, guess what? No There's no time. No We're going to be worshiping forever. God has to be worshiped in truth, which means in harmony with full, revealed, and attested truth. Full, revealed, attested truth. I can attest to the fact that God is real. Not in fallacy, not in controversies, not in ooh, ceremonies, uh, not in rituals, and not in offerings. I'm a living sacrifice. Simple enough, saints. Enough said. That's a whole other teaching for a whole other day. We are the living sacrifice, and we come before his throne with thanksgiving. We enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Again, he's not the sun, the moon, the stars, an image of wood, stone, metal, a beast or man. No. He's not the air. He's not the wind. He's not a universal no. mind. He's not love. Oh, I know. They're going to say it. The Bible says God is love. Why don't you figure out what we're talking about here first? Hot, hot love. He is not some impersonal quality. He has a spirit body. He has a spirit. Uh, he has a personal soul, a personal spirit body, a personal spirit like that of angels and like that of man. But his body is of spirit substance. Again, not flesh and blood. Job thirteen eight, Hebrews one three. We have covered all of these questions. Today, does God have a soul, oh, Sister G? Yes. And you have scriptures to back that up? I sure do. It's pretty interesting, eh? Mm -hmm. So I think we discovered in scripture that God has a personal soul. Yes. 
And you have to answer for yourself. If Jesus is God's soul. Back it up. When Jesus told the woman at the well. That you must worship in spirit and in truth. He started in verse 21. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. And this is John. I'm sorry. Yes, John chapter 4, verse 21. Jesus, Yahushua Hamashiach, said, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you will neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Oh, we ought to get you it. worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, saints, check it out. The hour is now. Now. Not last year, not a hundred years ago, not a thousand years ago. Right now, today. It's good for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The true is in contrast with the false. Think about that. There's a contrast there. There's a difference. It's either true or false. You must be an adorer, devoted to. Isn't that awesome? Again, your whole soul, mind, feelings, emotions, desires in harmony with full revealed and attested truth, not in fallacy, ceremonies, rituals, and offerings. Um, reading some of the commentary out of uh, the Dake Bible. Saints, get your scriptures, open it up, and find out that God has a soul. He said, all souls are mine. If all souls are the Lord's, then wouldn't you think that each of us are a part of his soul? Yes. I can back that up in scripture. Mm -hmm. John chapter 17. You want to go there? Mm -hmm. Let me find my little, little Bible. John chapter 17. I think it's 22. Jesus praying. John chapter 17 verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me I love it John chapter 17 pretty much says it all and if you read that whole chapter and context it's even more amazing to God be the glory Yahushua Hamashiach the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings glory he has a soul to God be the glory for the things he has revealed ha Sister G, that, was good. That, was, that is like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of that, though, really? About God Saints. having a soul. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about him having a soul and a spirit and a body? Stay tuned. We're going to find out about his spirit, spirit body, his spirit. His eyes, his legs, his hands, his feet, his mouth, his voice. My sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's not speaking from some off terrestrial, celestial planet. He lives right here, saints, inside us. John chapter 17. The glory which thou hast given me, I've given them that they may be one even as we are one saints. God. We're all up in God's soul and he's in us. Stay tuned till next time. And we're going to dive in some more on God's 
-hmm. amazing who he is and how he's made up. So I bless you. Mm -hmm. I love you, saints. I'm having an awesome time on this journey of discovery. Every day is amazing. Every day is awesome. And I just plead and apply the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over you to hide, protect, and keep you. It's sister with a testimony.